We are sending out a survey at the end of today's webinar as well, as always. So make sure you fill out that survey and get the 10% discount coupon from the content store. Uh, that's stackable with other coupons as well. So you can uh, you know, add them up. I'm going to talk about a content store promotion we have going on in just a moment here. Um, in addition to that, um, the survey, some of the survey, we are recording this as well. We're live streaming this on YouTube, uh, but we're not going to be answering questions on YouTube, unfortunately. So if you want your questions answered in the Q&A session, um, please uh, join the Zoom meeting. Uh, you can sign up from our webinar page, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. So let me just uh, get my screen shared here. And here we are. Okay. So a little, this is the outline for the webinar. Mark will talk more about this later. I don't think I need to explain too much about it, but it's a really cool, really visually cool um, webinar. And uh, Mark's going to explain more about this later. If you've signed up for the webinar, you've probably been to this page with the outline and everything. So we're not going to spend too much time on that. Um, exciting news for those of you who aren't aware, we have recently launched our 5.2 Cartoon Animator 5.2 update that contains a whole number of uh, really cool new features, actually. Like, I'm really excited about this one, to be honest, guys, because this is probably um, the update that has the coolest features, I think. Um, and I'm going to explain a little bit about these features before I hand the reins over to Mark. Um, we have the Motion Pilot, um, which is basically, the way I like to describe it is, it's basically playing, like playing a video game to animate almost. You know, you're like playing, playing to animate. Yes. And... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I really encourage you guys, uh, if you haven't already, just update to the 5.2. It's a free update if you own Cartoon Animator 5. Um, unfortunately, for those with, with 4, you do need to purchase the uh, 5 version. But there's a special upgrade price, and it's perpetual license for the rest of your life. So, you know, it's a really, really good deal there as well. Um, make sure you update to 5.2. Take a look at the Motion Pilot um, tool. Uh, we have some tutorials that were released on our YouTube channel and on the Religion Courses page. Um, really, really fun. Like, I've, I've had so much fun just messing around with this. You can see a bunch of uh, demos right here. Um, you're basically, you know, moving your mouse around and clicking to create actions and animations. And uh, it's a lot to go into. And we'll have a webinar on this um, probably in the very near future. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So Motion Pilot, um, check out this page right here. Uh, if you want, on your own time, I'll throw this into the chat window for you guys. There we go. Hello from Tampa, Florida. Hello, Mr. Uh, Alberto Ramirez. And hey, everyone else uh, from Newfoundland, Washington. We got people from all over the place. Um, here's the um, puppet animation uh, landing page you can check out. And we also have Motion Path. Now, this is a feature that's been with iClone for, for ages, but it's a really cool feature and really useful for you know, predetermining paths for your for your animated characters. And there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. I recommend checking out the tutorials on this as well. Oh, Cheryl's joining us from Eastern Australia. Hey, sir, Cheryl. All right. And Motion Path is super fun as well. I won't go blabbering on too much about this because I want you guys to kind of explore it on your own terms and just uh, check out the tutorials for sure. We launched them last week, so um, they're all available for you there. Next thing, next item of business here is our Power Tools um, collection. So we have a deal going on right now where if you purchase two items, you get 20% off. Three items, you get 30% off. So check out. We got some someone from Eastern Australia and someone from Western Australia. I, I sense a battle coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Australia is like that. Sometimes Canada is. But um, All right, and Puppet Gems is a new pack here. This uh, Puppet Gems pack, I'm going to click on this and put this in the link as well. Uh, this is a really cool pack that includes a whole bunch of different uh, characters that are, they have presets available. Um, if you want to know about the, all the puppet presets, uh, you can watch the tutorials, but uh, this is a really cool pack that includes a number of different characters. You can see the puppet profiles, um, 140 objects ranging from, you know, aliens to spaceships to fish to birds and everything like that. And there's also sample projects. So I really recommend checking this out. Uh, it's really cool, really cool pack. And I threw that uh, link in the chat window for you uh, as well. And one final thing before we get started here, um, if you are an educator, a student or a teacher or whatever related to the education field, um, I highly recommend checking out our Global Training Center right here. Um, this is where you get a 60% discount um, 
on any purchase of software. So if you want to purchase Cartoon Animator and you're a student right now or a teacher, anything like that, um, make sure you apply here. I'll throw this link in the chat as well. Make sure you apply here and we will get you the 60% discount. It's a huge discount, more discount than, than we ever have for any other deals. So um, yeah, get your uh, with your student ID card out and, and get a, take advantage of that deal and uh, the teachers as well. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. I think, um, did I forget anything, Mark? Anything that you're- uh... I think that's it. <laughs> I'm checking the links to the about... Yeah, that's all. Cool, yeah, we got a bunch of links to go through there. So uh, just wanted to fill you guys in on all the cool stuff that's going on. Check out 5.2, it's gonna blow your mind, look at the cool stuff you can do there. And uh, as as you know, it's all, it, we're always improving. So it'll be 5.3, 5.4, 5.5. And you can expect more free updates down the road with new features as well. Um, but I think, yeah, without further ado, um, I think I'll, I'll hand the reins over to you, Mark. Are you good to go? Yes, I'm good to go. Right on. Uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, let Mark take it away then with the live demo, and I'll see you guys in the Q&A session. Um, take it away, bud. All righty. I'm sharing the screen. Just want to confirm. Can everybody see it? No problem. All good? I'm good, yeah. Okay, so today we're going to talk about doing AI, animating AI generated images, right? Is master an epic warrior animation with AI generated images. This is basically what we're going to be animating. Now, for those of you familiar with my um, webinars, you know that I like to involve students. So, the, I strongly agree with Mr. Benjamin Franklin here. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I might remember. Involve me and I learn. So if you're watching this just for entertainment, okay, just sit back. Your goal probably is not to learn anything. But if you want to learn something, then I recommend you engage with the project files that I'm going to provide so you can actually experience the knowledge, not just see it passively, right? So who here, can you type it on the chat? Who here has Cartoon Animator? Maybe you have Cartoon Animator 4 or Cartoon Animator 5. So you can type, I see Cheryl Brown, you have it. And then CTA, some people have CTA 5. Some people are raising their hand. Like Type it in the chat. Actually, uh, people are raising their hand yeah, you can lower it because if you have questions, it's better if you post them on the Q&A. Yeah, like some of you have 4.5, 5, 4 and 5, 5. Okay, a lot of you have it. Right? Ooh, there's apparently no one who doesn't have it. CTA 5, but unfortunately it wasn't downloaded right, so I have to do it over. Okay, Debbie, you have to download it again probably then. Okay, thank you so much for participating. Nice, so a lot of you have it. Awesome. Now, I'm going to ask you if you already have it. The, apparently, no, none of you need to install the trial. Some people watching this on the replay probably need a trial to check it out. So I'm putting the link in there. Uh, hopefully, that link would be below this video on, on YouTube or, or wherever you're watching this replay. And... This is what I recommend you do. Get the project files. I'm going to put the link in the chat, right? Get, click that link. And that link is, is going to get you here. Let me just show you where it gets you. It gets you to this part where you can download these project files. It's more than a hundred megabytes. So uh, Google cannot scan it for viruses, but Anyway, you can download it and then scan it on your computer just to make sure that it doesn't have virus. I promise it doesn't, but you can scan it again and, and then uh, extract it. So you can get these. These are the project files that I'm providing, right? You have all of this. Let me see if you also have that that says links. Yeah, it also includes this one that has all the links that I mentioned in here. It's a link with all the things that I, I mentioned during this presentation okay okay so let's get started 
while you download it, you can leave this downloading in the background while I present the introduction. So going back to this presentation, this is the animation that we want to learn how to do. This is the end result of today for you to be able to do this, right? Now, this is just a character that I created in AI. And honestly, any of you can create it because I didn't use much talent. All I did was writing a prompt and then I got this, which is pretty cool, right? I, the creation of this, of the art needed, took me like, ju just this image. Let me just show you that once you get the this, these took a couple of minutes, right? So basically what you do is you take this image and then you prepare it for animation, right? So if that's the end result, let's go back to here. Then I have a question. How can you create amazing work in general? This is in general, whatever you want to do. Like I want to do an amazing YouTube channel, an amazing animation, an animation, uh, an amazing painting. Okay, if you want to create something really cool, you have to have a clear goal. I ask a lot of like, I love it when my students <laughs> know the answer. Like, what do you, anyone can recommend it? And references, yes, references. The goal is defined in references. So I'm going to go through five steps that we are going to follow to create this. Of course, we already saw the end result, but when I started, I had no idea. All I had in my head when the team of Revolution told me like, Mark, can you do something on AI? I was like, yeah, we can animate an epic warrior. That's all I had, epic warrior. So this is what I did. I just followed and got references, right? I used ChatGPT to give me ideas. Yeah, yeah, David, exactly. You can also get use ChatGPT. But I mean, the initial idea was something that I already wanted to do, like an epic warrior. And then I get references, images from the internet, right? That's my goal. I want to create something like this, and then I can show something. And then I generate that AI art, and then I take that image and prepare the AI character. And then once I have it prepared, I rig the PSD. And finally, I do the animation of the art, right? So I want to start with step one, the references. For the references, all I did was basically this. I just go to Google Images and go to Epic Warrior. That's what I did. And then I get a bunch of images. But what I need to be doing is saving those images. How can I save them? Well, I use a software. Anyone is familiar with the software called PureRef? Like, let me show the site, pureref.com. This site, PureRef. This is a free site. Yes, I have it, says Len. PureRef is just a big canvas where you can put a lot of lots and lots of images. It's like having a Photoshop document or a, a photo P document that has infinite canvas, like the canvas never ends and you can keep putting images forever and ever. And in here, if any of you is interested in collecting references, you just click on get pure ref and then you select your platform. And then if you want to get it for free, just choose another amount. And then I'm, I, you can delete this and put zero. Oops zero right with that the checkout tells you it's free right if you use it a lot you can buy them a cup of coffee maybe put one dollar and then get it again later if you found it useful right so this is incredibly powerful because this is basically it let me show you the software is this it's just a black screen where you can put stuff so i can have this black screen laying around in here and of course if i click here the my browser goes on top but if i click if i right click and go to mode and then all i choose always on top now suddenly 
that thing is always on top, right? So what I can do is make this small and then start collecting warrior images like, oh, this one looks cool, right? And then I can also go to another one. So you can see how easy it is. Like I can do this and then I can click on this one and then, oh, this one looks cool. So basically this process is a process that you follow and you do so like you disable your logical thinking that this is very important you don't think you just feel you, just by feeling like oh 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 this is incredibly relaxing and time goes by really fast because it's so enjoyable it's just enjoying yourself with really cool images that you find so i want to show you the images that i collected for this project that you can also open if you go to the project files. I'm going to put this away. If you go to the project files, you can see my pure ref file in here. Let me open it here, bring it. And I'm going to show you after I gathered a lot of images, I was like, yeah, look at all these very inspiring, at least for me, very inspiring images. Some of them called my attention, right? Like I can create when I'm getting this i'm already thinking how would i animate it right any of you has any idea how you could animate this like not not the technical steps you need to take to animate but more like do you know how this could look when it's moving anyone can you say yes or no like no i have no idea type it on the chat like uh you can type yes or you can type no any idea like Ima can you imagine movement? Do you have that kind of imagination? Can you imagine movement in this? Uh, to Tsutomu to, to says no. Some people say yes, yes. John Latham, you say no. A lot of you say yes, like Tracy, you, you could animate hair movement. Yeah, we could have the hair moving a little bit. We could have the cape moving. So I want to show you wind blowing the cloak. Yes, exactly. Really nice. So there, that's really good anim the imagination. So now what I want to show you is this, like these are examples of GIFs that you basically you could do something like this, right? This could be AI art that you move. Now this one requires a lot of complexity. We can see a couple more that are not as, not, not as epic. So this one, for example, you can animate something like this, right? I'm not talking technically, I'm just talking imagining my image coming to life, like also this one, right? Those are examples that I gathered from the internet, just moving slightly and then waves, right? This is another example. This one, I when I saw this one, I was like, ooh, this is really cool. So can you see how I'm gathering references? This is from a video game. So when I see, when I got the animation, uh, I finished, my brother said like, oh, it looks like one of those ads for mobile apps they do now. And I was like, yeah, it's true. So I thought, yeah, we could have a character that is in an angle. So when I rig it, it's compatible with any character from Cartoon Animator, right? So it could be like, I'm opening Cartoon Animator here and it could be like an actor like one of these guys, right? In in 45 angle, I just double clicked. Like what if I find or like get a reference that is in this angle, so all my motion clips are applicable to that character. That would be cool, right? So if I have, I have that in my mind, I can now be more specific. So you can see going back to this, getting references, is not just passively getting, like the first step is just passive. Like, yeah, just don't think, but later you stop and watch your references for a long time. Like I spent like maybe 15 minutes or half an hour just thinking, getting inspired. And then it's time to generate the AI art. Anyone familiar with how to create uh, AI art? Type in the chat, yes, if you know how. We have a couple of you familiar already. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking to see. Okay, Debbie, you have no idea. Debbie Medina, everybody, yes, yes. Used many in Discord, yes. He has been doing it for months. Cheryl Brown, very good, Cheryl. John Latham, you know Cliff. You don't know Cliff Duran, no, nope. Okay, 
Some of you don't know because most of you do know. I don't want to spend too much time today in the like ins and outs. This is something you can do that like when I didn't know how to use at all, like anything, I did this. I just went to uh, YouTube and type this, uh, generate AI art tutorial. Just type that. I'm putting this uh, search in here. Just type that. And you're gonna get like, okay, how to generate insane AI art for beginners. Alrighty, and it's apparently a two minute video. Perfect, in two minutes you are, you're going to know because it's really that easy. Now I'm going to open my Mid Journey Discord right here. And I want to show you some of the art that I have created. The way it works, let's create one right now. The way it works is you do something, you type this, prompt, prompt, is that how you, uh, no, image, imagine, you type this, like slash, and then imagine, and then I click there and it says prompt, and then I can type anything. Anyone would like to tell me what to create really quick, just uh, as an example. Thanks, Cheryl. Leonardo AI is free, just as good. Okay, I haven't tried Leonardo Faux dot AI, but look at that. Yes, Cheryl, thank you for recommending that. I'm going to just Leonardo AI. Anyone would like to put something? Oh, this is fun. Anyone, just Leonardo also? Anyone, type something that you would like to create on with AI, like a character, what, what you would do, like a, a, I don't know, can free trial? Demon warrior, okay, a ninja. Okay, so I'm going to combine a ninja, demon, warrior. I'm just combining what, uh, witcher. All right, interesting. I'm combining uh, a couple of what the things that you're saying. Now, not only am I saying this, but I'm also going to type fantasy, right? Uh, digital painting, and then press enter, and then it's going to be generating. While it's generating, I want to show you some of the things that I created. This takes a couple of, of minutes, maybe one or two minutes. So let's let it generate it in the background. And some of the things that I have used for my projects are these, like this is a background that I use. I just removed this character and use this background for an animation that I did some time ago. And it was pretty cool, right? And the one that I did was I create this and then you basically get for um for options right once you get those four options you can get option one this is one two three and four i could have gone with either of those now because this one uh, of course we know this is the one that i choose i'm gonna tell you why because i liked that he was not picking his sword like this would be difficult to animate i would need to do a lot of, of adjustments so i took this one not only did I do that, but I used the upscale, which is it kind of like, like it, it gets you this like a uh, high resolution image, but this is not enough. So I used this thing that is called zoom out and then boom, it zooms out, right? And now I have a more like a full body character. And let's see what it created. Look at this. Like, <laughs> it looks like the Witcher. Uh, it's a ninja, <laughs> we put ninja, witcher, warrior, demon, right? So it's really cool how this, this was created just in a couple of seconds, right? So you just put a prompt. I haven't tested um, the, the Leonardo AI. Thank you so much for the link. I'm going to include this. Let me send this link to the Relution team so they could also add it. Okay, link, links for AI art. This is interesting. Okay, I just put it on, on a chat that we have so they could consider putting in because that, that link is pretty cool. Let me just type it in here. Oops, no, is this one? I, I've never seen app Leonardo AI art. Okay, so you create an account, I assume, and then you start creating things. 
But for those of you watching the replay, this is the link, leonardo.ai. It's app.leonardo.ai. That's cool. All righty. So once I have that image, I am now going to go through a process that takes, like, because, depending on, on the, uh, uh, yeah, it looked like Gerald. <laughs> depending on the quality that you want to get, that's the time that you need to invest, okay? You need, for any quality, you need to invest something. You need to either invest money by hiring people or getting assets or invest time. Those affect the quality of the work. Now, because I like my work to look really good, I spend a lot of time taking really good care of the details. And because if I do this in front of you, uh, like um, in live, I'm going to take like an hour and a half. We don't have an hour and a half. We have like half an hour left. <laughs> so what I did was record myself doing the whole process, relaxed without any pressure, with a cup of tea, like some juice, like some snacks, and then keep working, enjoying myself. I took like an hour and a half, and then I'm going to show you like a fast forward of the whole process. Does that sound good? Just so I don't uh, take a lot of your time. At the end, in the Q&A, if you have any questions on any specific technique that I did, we can go slower in the Q&A. You can tell me like, ah, how did you do this? Like when you uh, extracted this thing or I have problems with that, we can go really slow in the Q&A. All right. So let me share my screen. I'm going to share this screen, screen two. Right now it's not showing anything. Now you should see this, right? So basically, can anyone see the, the screen? It, it should say clean background. Can you see that? Yep. Yes, okay, I have a couple of yeses. Perfect. Now that I confirmed that, this is what I do. Basically, uh, let me just explain. I'm going to use, if I'm animating this, uh, I, let me just go back to, uh, I'm going to show you what I'm thinking. Okay, I have that image that I saw. Let me zoom out. Okay, I have that image. How am I going to animate it? I'm going to need a background, something behind, and then I'm going to need the character in the middle, and then there's going to be foreground because there are elements in front of the character. Just so you can see, like, because we have the advantage of this is now part of the past, I can show you what I was thinking. And that was, I'm going to show again the animation that we did. And that animation was, let's go back to here this right so you can see that there are elements in front of this guy so we have these elements and then this guy and then the background so there are three elements that means i need this image to be the multiplied three times three images of the same but one i'm going to take extract the character in another i'm going to extract this part in front and in another one i need to erase everything for the background. You can see that I erased, uh, and actually when you look at the background, there are, uh, I don't know if any of you noticed, but this is bad. You can see that there are mistakes in there that I are kind of hidden, all right? So let's do that cleanup. I'm going to show you how I did that cleanup and it's very easy. Again, if you have any questions on any of the, of the techniques that I'm using, you can tell me, ask on the Q&A and I can go slower. Uh, the, for the cleanup, I just take the background and I erase with something called content aware delete, which is just pressing shift F5 on Photoshop. And the same works in Photopea. Photopea is free. Like a lot of people don't like Photoshop. Then I recover a little bit of the sun. And then when I extracted this image, by the way, there's uh, something else that I didn't cover. This image is super high resolution. And I'm going to show you something that I got here. I got this. This is the image. It's really small. Look. And if I zoom in, this is what I got from mid-journey. You can see that it's really pixelated. So how did I upscale? You can also upscale images with mid-journey, but I don't like how that looks. Uh, I don't know if Leonardo.ai can upscale images. I use a program called Gigapixel that helps you 
it, that's the name like i put the name of the software right there and actually if i don't know if we have helene in here in the class but actually finally i, I listened to helene <laughs> helene and and another some other students who have been insisting like mark you should get it it's really cool a really cool software it upscales images so now this is 4k and you can see that the resolution the resolution is really cool it i took a long long time because it's a hundred dollars so i i was kind of saving little by little until i finally got it right it's because it's not a software that i'm going to use all the time so it was not uh but finally i invested in it so I recommend it. I'm providing you the high resolution image so you can experiment with it, right? And try to follow all of these. Remember, you won't learn anything if you don't try doing this. It doesn't have to be this character. It can be something that you create, right? So that, that was the first step, extracting the, like cleaning the background like this and then extracting the character. That I took, Real, I, I took a long time going slowly with my pencil and just being as specific as possible. Like, there's other services of AI that charge money and they do this for you. And then once I extracted the character, this is now a separate layer, right? And then I, I was like, you know what? I like the cape. I kind of removed it. And then instead, what if I get a cape from the internet and I just put it there? Right, because this cape, let me go back. This one felt like that. This, I don't think that's gonna work. So I went to Pexels and this was a failure. I didn't find uh, a cape. And then I went to Free Pick and then type uh, for a cape. And then in there, I found this cape, this link, and then this one. And then I thought, those look cool, but I don't know. This looks very cartoony. Maybe it won't fit. So what I did was a test. The test. For a quick test, you can just take a screenshot. That is with a tool called Snipping Tool in Windows. Mac has something very similar. And then I just test like, let's see how this is going to look. It's all very pixelated. If I like it, then I will get the vectors. And then, yeah, with some kind of color correction, I think I can make it work. It doesn't look amazing, so, uh, but it doesn't look terrible. So I just downloaded the, the, the thing and then extract it, open the, the thing on, on Illustrator, then huh, I don't like these little balls that I have in there. So I just went in here, I did a, a quick cleanup, then deleted those, and that cape has high resolution. So now that was the official cape after some color correction that I did. I'm using very a little bit of advanced techniques uh, software mark said to upgrade pixel art. Okay, Nancy Moon, let me just stop here for a second just to show you the link of Gigapixel. Is this one? You can just search for Gigapixel and it's this one. Uh, it's 99. Like sometimes they have offers. I bought it at, I think that came was a nice touch. Yeah, uh, thank you, the Wayne. So I just put the link in there. It's not free, it's not free. I know there's, I probably you could find some free resources. If you find some free, free resources like Leonardo.ai, thank you so much. I think, who, who was it, who recommended it? But yeah, thank you for recommending. Ah, Sean D put the link. Thank you, Sean, for, for sharing it. The, I love when students share me free resources, like, oh yeah, thank you. Okay, let's continue with the, with the process. And then after I had that, like I started at like this cape doesn't belong to the scene yet. I did something extra, which was to add this highlight. For that, I use a little bit of my knowledge in digital painting. And it's not that much of advanced knowledge in here, but you can see that it, it adds a lot to it, like oh, doing other color corrections. And now this feels like now it's part of, of the scene. Let me go back. This is the final result. Now with this extra painting, it feels like now this also reflecting some from the light. I mean, is receiving uh, uh, light from the sun from behind, right? That rim light. And then after that, I did the, those were the digital painting retouches. And then this one is fairly easy. It's just extracting the elements of the foreground. And then I was like, wait, uh, are those people? I think those are people. <laughs> 
But I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of gonna remove those and just put this. Maybe it looks like a, a couple of helmets and that's basically it. And then I now start preparing the document. Before I go on to this, we are about to finish. It's preparing this and once we have that, we do a lot of, of the preparation for the rigging. So I want to show you, if you go to the PSD files, I had everything like in stages, right? Just so you can open each one and see how you can, oh, so this is how it looks. Oh, like this is the character, the layer's ready. I'm going to open it just so you, I can show you. I don't have Photoshop open, it's opening. And then there's the, the template for you, any of you who want to actually follow along. I would love to see some of you doing AI art and then send it to me. I love watching my, my students working on stuff. So basically what we get is that we get to this stage where I have this layer and then I have this cape. So now I, I made it a little bit more complex. And then the background, you can see that the back oh, is actually the background and the sun. So it's all these three layers. All of this and the background is not perfect, but we didn't need perfect. <laughs> and then the foreground, this, right? So now I can extract each one. I can isolate like this, just the character alone or extract and render the cape alone or this alone, right? And then the background. So once I render everything, now it's time to work on the warrior exclusively. And so this next stage is about just extracting like all the elements of, the, of this character, right? Extracting the head, extracting the, the part of the body. Now, is anyone familiar with animating pictures? I'm interested, can, can you, okay. Yeah, image. Thank you, Juan. Juan Duran, you're sharing a new resource. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, yes, not yet, said Deborah Smoots. I'm taking notes for myself. So just saving this link to check it later. And not yet, a little bit, says Ra Raimundo. I've seen Terry Gilliam do it already. So a couple of you have some, some experience then, not, not a lot of you. Not yet. Okay, so basically what you want to do is separate every element of the template. Like I would, if this is my first time, what I would do is do this, like go to the project files, open the template and just pay attention to all the elements that I need. Okay, I'm whatever image I have, I'm going to need something that has the neck, the torso and the, the hips or everything together, right? And then I'm going to need an arm, and then another arm, and then the hand, and so on and so forth. The same for all the limbs, and then the head, right? The same for the limbs. I need this in a separate layer, right? each one of those in a separate layer, right? So, okay, that is what it's in my head while I'm following this process. So I'm extracting parts, but then when I'm going to extract the arms, I'm like, you know what? I want this to rotate perfectly. And one thing that I do is I like to have, um, let me explain it with this. I actually printed this and exported them because this is something that I see a lot of students uh, ask me like, Mark, why is my, like, like my, the image looks okay, but when the arm rotates, it disconnects, it go like, and what's happening is that they have the images rendered like this. And then when it rotates, it, it does this, right? And the elbow looks really weird. It look it looks like broken, right? Sometimes it goes all the way to floating like this, and it's like, what's going on? And it's because it's not connected correctly. So what you want to think is on an overlapping circle where you have two elements connected like that, and then let me use my pen in here. Then this can, oops, this can rotate correctly let me just do this again here it goes now this can rotate and now it looks look like this and then like this like however you rotate you're going to have a smooth circle in there right so i that's what i had for this guy and for that i use this technique uh, using circle joints right okay let's keep sharing screen number two 
And so I do like I create all those circles. I'm playing that in fast forward. And then I start extracting the arms. Like I'm going to show you the end result of the, when we finish extracting all the, the parts, every single part. And then the feet, I did something in here because this character is going to be walking forward. I don't want the one feet to look in this direction. That is going to look weird when he walks, right? You can do this. So I just used a little bit of, of my drawing skills in there to draw the feet like that. And then I start extracting everything and I have now everything ready. Let me show you how the end result of that looks like, which again, I encourage you to interact with these uh, files. I'm going to use this one, the character layers. And this is what I have. Like you end up having duplicates, like this is the arm, but look, the arm has part of the chest. Can anybody see it? And then I have this and it has a little bit of the hip in there. But I know that if I take this and rotate the arm, this is going to look very, really good because of the joint circle that I used there, right? You, we have the joint circles in here, like tick, right? The same with, with this, for example, this, and then this, this uh, sword, right? And you can see that when I take, for example, the leg, the leg has the sword in there. So now what you need to do is take each element. Let me just show, for example, the hip. This should not have the shoulder in there. The shoulder should be on another layer. And this is where a lot of students get a, a little bit confused. All you have to do is just make sure that each layer, when it, it's isolated like this, this should look good, right? If I isolate the forearm, this should look good alone, right? Actually, the hand looks perfectly fine. So the next step that I take is do a little bit of digital painting, right? I take this and then I, I actually did something that I was going to do, I ended up not doing. Like I, uh, the, this is digital painting skills, right? Like putting it like that and then putting the hair in a different layer. Then at the end, I got lazy and I didn't animate the hair, but it would have been cool, right? <laughs> I was like, nah, let's, let's just uh, wrap it up. And also another detail that I did for the head is removing this hair, right? With some digital painting. And then you can see that I painted there, like a, a tool that I use a lot is the uh, feel awareness tool, content awareness feel. And so I just go through that process in fast forward, like making things look okay. And then in here, I start testing rotations. This is very important because look, let, let me show you how these this tests were going. Let me play. Like I did this rotation and then, ah, that's going to look very stupid. And then from this joint, ah, that looks stupid. And then I'm experimenting, where can I put the pivot point? Right now it's in here. Can anyone see it? Uh, again, I can go really, really uh, slowly in explaining how, to do all of this, like testing the rotations of the elements in Photoshop, right? Before I waste a lot of time in breaking my brain inside Cartoon Animator, like, ah, oh, why does this work? Instead, I, I fixed everything from the design phase. Like I test a lot, like the arm looked really good. And then I kept doing more and more, like testing the rotation of the form, the, that arm, I think I liked it. Let me just show you the rotation slowly. Like I, change the pivot point to another place. And then this rotation, uh, actually the rotation was in here. This rotation was looking really good. I was like, yeah, I like it. Maybe it won't move too much, but moving a little bit would look good. And so I did a little bit of painting in there. I removed the sword, right? And I created this other layer. That's another thing that I'm thinking because when I think of the whole thing, let me just open Photoshop. I need to have the hip in front and then the leg and then like a sandwich behind should be something behind the leg, right? So this, that was the layer that goes behind the leg. Just let it load. And then I paint the legs. The legs were fairly fast. 
And then I open this a little bit more just so when he moves some more adjustments. And then I just make sure I do this quick check to make sure that every layer alone looks okay, right? And then I, I'm i ready to start doing some uh, basic testings, right? Like, yeah, rotating every part, moving the pivot point. And then in here, I was like, yeah, I don't like the arm. And then again, the quality, the time you invest in here depends on the quality that you want because I want really high quality. I spent a long time just making sure that this arm looked okay when he opened his arm like that. At the end, I ended up not opening his arm like that, but in case I need this for later, I could have the arm looking really cool. So now I'm going to do this, like actually do the rig of this character. As you can see, when you rig a character in Cartoon Animator, the characters are facing in this direction. So uh, actually that happened after some trial and error. I spent some time rigging it the other way and then, ah, now I have to flip. So this is, I, I'm saving you the trouble of seeing me suffer. But basically you have to flip the character like that. And then I bring the template and then just start putting all the images in the proper places for the template, right? Like all the, the elements of the face, et cetera, et cetera. Just making sure that that everything is like, like a substitution, right? Like any of you, I want to see your experience. Any of you have done this, like using a template and then rigged a character like that? You can just type yes, you can type no. Yes, no, to, to Tomu, and then yes, yes, yes. Maxim, no, John Latham, no. Once, you did it once. Pierre, no, Debbie, no. Okay, a lot of you don't have experience. So for this, maybe you can take some tutorials because I'm going really fast in here. Basically, it's almost like a game. Like you have to fit, there was a, a game when I was a, like a, a little kid that in, I, it's a method, uh, educational method called Montessori where there's like, you, you have seen this game. There's like a triangle and there's like a square and then there's holes of a triangle. And, a, and then you have, as a kid, you have to put it in the right place. Anyone seen those games? Like for little kids to like, hey, it's for cognitive. Uh, yes, Steve, yeah. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. This is basically it. The same thing, but in, in, in a template. What you do is you see the left forearm the folder for the left forearm, and then you take the drawing of your forearm and you put it there. Then the right arm, you take your right arm, you put it there. The right foot, you put it there. That's what you do. It's so easy. It's actually pretty relaxing. It can take like five minutes, but it's, it's not like, uh, like oh my God, things can go wrong. It's it's easy. It's ju it just takes time. It's like, uh, I maybe it could be so, uh, a little bit meditative. If, if you put some music, right, to enjoy yourself or, or put something to really enjoy. And then you put the, the bones in place, right? And that's why I like the joint circles because those circles were tested. So I know that if I put them in the correct place, everything is going to work really well. So that's all I do. I just put all the bones in those joint circles, right? Just like that. And with that, we're going to have the character ready, right? Now everything is ready and we're going to reorder. Ah, no, this is, that's, that was the first step putting the, and this is what I was telling you. Like I see the left forearm and then I just bring everything in there. Like uh, first I put all the folders in the same order as I have in, the, in my drawing. And then this is all I do. Look, let me play it a, a little bit in slow motion in like this, just the hip, the right arm, and then the hip, and then the left forearm, and then the left hand. That's all you do. I'm going to go now in fast forward. Just that is very simple. Is easy enough, right? And then this is the only one that is tricky because I didn't have the template, didn't have a folder for this body behind. So I needed to create that folder. Not only that, I also need to go in and then create a bone, I just duplicated the hip, a bone that says body behind, right? That's maybe a little bit advanced, but it's not that hard. It's just a duplicate. And then that's what I did in there. And then 
I go here and now it's testing time. Yes, look at that. Woohoo! And now I have an image that I can bring to life. But this is important. I cannot use motion clips. For this, I just need to do this really quick uh, uh, change, which is I just take a, like a rectangle and put it in 45 degrees from the shoulder. And then I just take the arm like I do that for both arms, but the line has to be from the pivot point like that. And then all I do is take the, his arms in Photoshop and rotate them in that position. And by the way, anyone notice that this hand is actually the hand, but all the, the sword was connected to the hand. Like I, I'm not using a separate layer for this, a separate prop. <laughs> I don't want to struggle. So I just put everything in the same place. So now that I have the character like this, I can just erase those helpers. And then I brought it here and look at that. Now I was able, this is perfect. This is so good. It feels so good at the end, like so refreshing, like, look at that, I have a character that I did. And then you start bringing the motion clips and it works, look at that. So now I have a character that can walk. I'm just removing the FFD so it looks more realistic. Look at that, it works. So once I have that, it's very, I use these uh, other motion clips that are from the Vogue motion clips so the character would look so serious. Because in here, I thought, yeah, this looks okay, but he looks so relaxed. <laughs> and for an epic soldier, that I don't think that that's how he would walk like i i was thinking yeah maybe he's more guarded like this is from a, a supermodel uh, motion clip right but then i did some adjustments to the animation some tweaking again as a when you invest more time to the details to making sure things look really cool you you just spend more time so i did things to move the hand a little bit more because he i thought he was too stiff and this was the end result a character that just moves a little bit and then stops. That's the whole animation. So now that we have that, I am ready to start exporting all the elements. I export the background, I export the cape, I export the foreground, and now I start bringing all the elements together. Like, oh yeah, I have the background and then I do some more adjustments to the animation of the hand, like this, right? Like all of this, anyone here has experience animating like this or is this too advanced? Yeah, you've got a lot of header, but I look forward to learning this. I have ways to go. Yes, Debbie, you have ways to go. And the cool thing, Debbie, is that now with AI art, you don't need some uh, amazing talent. Like you can see that the, the art for this looks amazing and I didn't do anything. I just typed something on my computer. I have started. All right. So some of you say uh, that's similar in Unity. Okay, Maxim, uh, if you have experience in Unity, this is going to be a piece of cake. Unity is much more complicated. And then just started the way done once, John Latham. Okay, so this animation, I have experience, but if I didn't have any experience, all my movements would look really weird. And what I would do is use references for the walks, right? So I, at the end, I just put something called moving hold, right? Which is a, once he finishes, I don't want him to be stiff. And, and instead, he does like this little movement. And now I do some camera movement. And now we have this. I right? like, oh, like, yeah, he looks, he looks a little bit up. I add the foreground, put it in place. And then the cape. Now the cape, I invest a little bit more just to add this, this is important for those of you, some of you have Mac, this is not available in Cartoon Animator 4. This is a feature that is exclusive for Cartoon Animator 5. Like you add bones, I mean, adding the bones, all of this is, is available in Cartoon Animator 4, but this next part, let me just put all the bones. This next part of the springs to automate this and have this, like I just moved the top, and, and by the way, now with the, the motion pilot, you can animate all of this much easier. I could have animated this much easier. So this is pretty cool. Now that I have that, I just have this 
add the prop in here. I export it as a prop. Right now, it's not part of the character. So I do that. And then I add it here to the character. And then I realized that there was a mistake in here. I want to save you uh, strength. The cool thing is, when you're learning from someone is that you learn from my pain. <laughs> you learn from my mistakes. I should have exported the cape flipped. So I export the, fl the, the flip cape and then I do all the bones again. The, it's so fast, actually. Let me tell you how much time this was. This took one minute, actually. All of that took one minute. Like do, doing all of this that you're watching in here took one minute. It's very easy. Then I took the cape and then I put, oops, I did something. I put the cape in here and then I just bring it here as part of the character. This is how you do things. Like you export, you just click on custom and you click save, it's, it's save. And then you open the, the character in, in composer mode and then you add it there to the character from content, right? And now I have uh, a character with a cape and this is the end result. Final animation, there it is. So yeah, this is very exciting. We share your page, <laughs> says, says Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl, thank you so much for that. And that's it. Now we can go to some q and I'm sick, like, I need to blow my nose. I needed to blow my nose. I'm sick, but I, I showed up. I, I took a nap before this, this class. <laughs> sick, sick in September, eh? Yeah, it's so, so annoying. I, uh, but, but I show up. I show up. I, I enjoy this. Good on you, man. You got a good work ethic. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for that, Mark. That was amazing. I think, uh, I think everyone agrees. Um, a really kind of innovative and, and unique new way to to animate your not only just to animate the characters but also to you know generate the characters your unique AI generated characters and animate them with cartoon animator just using simple rigging and stuff a little bit of simple Photoshop and you're good to go. Uh, that uh, generative fill what, what's that tool called again the uh, smart generative fill. Yeah, it's like uh, I can illustrate really quick for for anyone. Like one of the things that you do is you have any image, for example, I, I can do this in a couple of seconds, actually. Let me close all of this. I Again, I strongly recommend you open the project files. You can open, for example, this, actually, let me, is the images. Well, Cheryl there. mentioned in the comments here, generative fill and generative expand in Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. I've used both of them. I just kind of forget what they're, what they're actually called. Like, for example, I don't like this floating cape. I can just use the lasso tool and then select this cape like this and then press mm. shift F5, right? Uh, do I have the correct thing selected? Let's see, shift F5, and then I get this thing, fill. Of course, I can fill with, with black or anything. I just select content aware, and it's going to take pixels around the image and use AI to remove it. And then I did this the same, like I just select the whole warrior like this and the sun like this and just again shift f5 and content aware and it takes a, this one takes a little bit more because but it removes it right a little bit of fog yeah yeah and, still, of, right? and, and it, it's not perfect like you can go in and then paint a little bit but uh, honestly it's not too bad like uh, w whenever i show that animation to people nobody says like hey wait a second the background looks weird nobody notices like the, the <laughs> yeah like They're everybody starts on the character uh, yeah so it's pretty cool right on well that's that was awesome again um guys we're going to go into the q a session right now um so if you have any questions put your questions in the q a we only got uh one, one question, question here so far <laughs> this yeah. is kind of like a uh, strange I occurrence normally we have I see people but... type in on the chat. No, don't type it on the chat. Type it on the Q&A. It says chat, and next to it, it says Q&A. Click there. Yeah, there's a separate uh, window for Q&A and for chat, so go. just so you guys are aware. Um, I'm looking through the chat. It doesn't seem like there's that, that many questions, but uh, yeah, put your questions in the Q&A. If you have any questions about what Mark did, I think if you don't have any questions, then Mark, you must have done a fantastic job because everyone's... <laughs> Super clear on, <laughs> on exactly what happened uh, there. And, uh, when, when you guys don't have questions, 
that that like it could mean like oh i explained it really well but the other thing is like guys i the, i tell this to my students i'm disappointed when you don't have questions you're not curious enough you're not hungry for <laughs> learning come on yeah, ask things yeah, i get a lot of teachers like that it's like oh you guys don't have any questions you're not intuitive yeah. or you're not inquisitive enough you know like, like in in my classes i i give daily live classes for anyone who needs help with with cartoon animator related stuff I give uh, free classes daily to help students. And I tell, okay, we, we're get, I'm making time to gather questions, but I, I actually oh, yeah. say, well, when you guys don't have questions, then I have questions. And then I start asking just to, to see what, what's stuck. Okay, we have first question. Okay, well, we got a couple of questions now. Uh, one question is from Steve. Are there any tutorials using Krita to read characters? Uh, we don't have any on our religion courses page. I, I do a lot of the tutorials um, myself, so I haven't done any on Krita yet. So no, but uh, do I, you know do have, or... I, I do have a recommendation. Instead of Krita, consider Photopy. Every single thing that I did here can be done like in Photopy. Every single thing. Like you can import the template. You can see that I have a template in here. Like every single thing you can also, for example, I can take this. L I'm going to show you the example of the, that that feature is advanced, like the content that where is the same shortcuts, shift F5, and I can fill with the background. I can fill with content that where, press okay. And I also like everything that is available in Photoshop is available in here. Like I didn't like how it brought some of this, but everything, like all the tools, the liquify, like even very advanced things, are there. So I recommend Photopy, any tutorial that you see someone doing Photoshop, do the exact same in Photopy. And if you have questions, I provide support. You can write to me uh, to my email or reach out on Discord. Or Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Photopia Photopy. is also free as well. So, I mean, it's free. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Like you get those ads, right? That That's annoying, but that's the price for freedom. <laughs> Yeah, they, they 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 never used to have the ads, but then they kind of integrated it recently. So it's yeah, little, probably to monetize. You know, it's it's life. It's things that we have to deal with in this this day of the internet. You know. Uh, okay, question from Debbie: Are are there enough similarities in other CTA versions that it can be that can be used in the CTA five? Um, I would answer this right off the bat, Debbie: That CTA five, especially five point two, the two features that I mentioned, the motion pilot and the motion path. Those are incredible features, and I highly recommend. Those two features yeah, yeah. alone are worth the five five uh, version five upgrade. To be honest with you, I mean, there's so you can do so many cool things, and when you see the tutorials and see the demo videos we've done on on the sites I mentioned earlier, man, you'll be like, wow, this is you know, it saves you like hours and hours and hours. Like when I, I think Mark, you, you, me, and Gary, we we're all in the same meeting. We we're just kind of yes, like, we were like looking at this at the new features. We're like, boom, boom this like blows your mind. But, it was really and, cool. It was so fun. It was so fun because every like by the third feature, we were like, wow. And it was like, it was like one of those infomercials, like, but that's not at all. We also <laughs> have it. And oh my God. And that's not all. Like it was like, yeah, like 10 things. I, I want to share really quick my screen just to show people how cool that Over, feature yeah. is. Because if I wanted to do this animation, right, let me go to props and get this octopus. If I wanted to animate this guy and look really fluid, like super fluid, I would struggle so, so much, right? Because there's so many things that I, even though it's rigged, like if I have to draw everything, I would take even more time. But even though I have, uh, everything is rigged, I would still take a long time. But look what you get when you use the, one of the new features, the, the motion pilot. I'm going to click there and then face cursor. And then look at when I do the preview. I take this guy. Oh wait, oh wait. I do I have it selected? Yeah, that one here. Then preview space. Look, look. I'm just moving the mouse. Boom, 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 boom. So yeah. How easy is this? Like I would take so much time to animate this. Like. Um, let me, oops, I need to go back. Not only that, you, you can have the exact same character. You can multiply that character like 10, yes. 12 times. Yes. And you can it's, have them all like following with different kind of behaviors behind it as well, using flock it's, behavior. It's insane. And now, of course, that was a preview. If I want to record, 
I hit space and now I start moving him. So how many seconds? It took five seconds to animate this. Look, now I have this animation. I'm not doing anything. It's animated. Insane, insane. This is like, wow. So uh, when this update came after I prepared the whole webinar, so I was like, ah, no, the next time I can move <laughs> the cape with my mouse. So it, it moves very cool with the wind. Yeah, I can I can definitely tell you guys we're going to have some more webinars in the future specifically about those features because there's so many things you can use them for. Not only like Mark showed you a very simple example, but there's so, so many more options as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so that would be my answer to Debbie, and uh, I think we kind of made our point there. Uh, John says, well, this replace movies. I don't think anyone, anything will replace movies. So <laughs> um, movies will always be with us, in my in my opinion. Uh, just like writing has always been with us since the dawn of man. Uh, question from Steve. I thought Photopia doesn't connect to CTA5. Uh, yeah, it does. It does. Um, we, we, we don't have a live link uh, like we do with um, uh, Photoshop, but you do have to export and re-import things using photo ah, the, so low, like the pipeline doesn't work on CD5? yeah because it's, it's 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 not uh application based it's like uh, on our on ah, the, it's in the because browser it's in a browser yeah yeah so it's a little ah, bit that's different the weakness. Ah, i can see why people is in, are interested in creta then okay yeah um, uh, and let me just drop something in before the next question for that for the student uh, who asked about creta what I would do if I was in your place is this, like whatever feature I would learn how that feature is called, like uh, content of wherever feel or whatever. And then how to do this in Krita, how to cut a character in Krita, how to paint in Krita, like just how to in Krita and do, like there's so many tutorials on YouTube, you will find your, the answer. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I learned half of my Blender stuff on, on YouTube myself, to be honest. <laughs> you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, Tra uh, Tracy asks, is there something like this for vector? Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're using vector characters or, or image-based characters, you, you can still use the same features. Um, just, uh, I, I think the, the AI-generated image you had obviously is not vector because it's uh, no, AI-generated. AI so. That AI is pixels. Yeah, so it, I, I, as far as I know, there's no AI that uh, generates vector images. Do you know of any? I, I don't Not know. That I know. I don't think yeah. it's that is going to take way more time. To, well, you never know. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, honestly, I mean, it's, it's not yeah, too difficult. It's, it's, it's just an algorithm. These vectors, images are just algorithms, basically. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the way they expand without without um, distorting the uh, borders and stuff, it's all just math in the end and i mean ai is growing exponentially so maybe in a few years maybe not mm. yeah all right uh rez asks oh he mentions this tutorial is very straightforward and comprehensive thanks uh i wonder if you have done any tutorials on turning photos of people into vector files and eventually into svg characters if not will there be yeah. any in the future um converting jpegs or or whatever sort of image format you have into a vector format um there are ways to do it um now the results can vary depending on the complexity of your image I, i've experimented with it experimented with it myself a few times wow. um obviously if you feel like a stick character you know it's, it's not too hard to do that um there there are ways you can convert but obviously with the, the type of character that Mark had, for example, there's so many, um, it's very high uh, detail uh, as, as an image-based image, image -based format that the converting that to vector-based, um, it's not going to have the best results. Uh, in, in my experience, I've only done it like a, a bit myself. Have you done that at all, Mark, yourself? I have done... Uh... Uh, uh, Cheryl says like ve there's vector AI. This looks pretty cool and that looks interesting. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm going to save okay. that link. Let me just open it so I can save it. Interesting. Okay, so uh, mm. rest. What I have done, I I actually recording a new course that I'm going to launch 
probably very soon in the next couple of weeks. And I talk about that because a lot of students, because vectors, you can have that zoom. But the thing with vectors is that sometimes to do a lot of editing, when they have a lot of colors, when they, vectors is more for simplified characters. But when they have a lot of shadows and a lot of texture, all of that is better if you use pixels because finding all the little vectors and vector points and it takes so much time. And I proved it. I, I did an experiment with a, with a character from FreePick and it took me so long to, do, to edit it and separate it in vectors perfectly. And in, in pixels, I did it super fast. Now, what if I want to have close-ups? Then I have a render a character that is really big so I, it can handle a close-up right so yeah like mark, mark hit it right in the button there it's, it's often kind of like the gradual shadows um yeah. that are cause the problems in, in converting to vector images so i mean if you if you have like you know three level shading like you know a lot of anime does um it's not too difficult but you know like the, the image mark showed it's like very very detailed in it's you know color palette so yeah. it's very difficult to do that um, let's move on to the next one anyways from uh yep. Ray, raymundo castillo batista the same process for motion comics absolutely that's it. yeah uh, that's exactly the process you will follow in motion comics yeah uh good question raymundo uh that's exactly we, we we've had this for a while that kind of workflow for a while but um uh, the ai generated one and mark showed us all the rigging and everything like that which is uh, really cool it's good to know the details um, Deborah asks, when will your master rigging course be launched? Uh, actually, the, the official name now is Speed Rigging. It's focused on rigging super fast. And that, mm -hmm. again, I still don't. I'm, today, I was actually finishing it, uh, like finishing the last lessons edited, but I still have to create uh, a lot of things. So, probably in two weeks. So, it's very, very soon. Probably. Th thank you, Deborah, for your interest. Okay. Uh, Debbie, or sorry, Tracy mentions I use Illustrator. That's great. Uh, Illustrator is awesome. yeah. obviously amazing for vector vector images. It's been around for a long time. Uh, Debbie asks another question here. I was wondering because while I was doing a course and started using CD4, I kept running into issues. When I tried moving the actor, I had to fight with it. <laughs> Maybe it's how it was downloaded. I did send a ticket and need to review their suggestions. Okay. Well, um, hopefully, Debbie, the team has gotten back to you on, on your... Uh, customer support uh, ticket there and hopefully they can resolve that for you um the, the issue seems a little bit big but uh we're not here to troubleshoot unfortunately apologies for that but uh um, hopefully you get a result and uh yeah. you know, a good good customer support team there um okay um tracy mentions here i'm speaking of content aware or fill yeah i think that was from a previous the generative fill. Okay, question from Ron Ronald Slaughter. What a cool name, Ronald Slaughter. Um, with your AI pick demo, I would like to try photo vibrance for movement like hair and cloud movement in the background. Um, but not sure if this program can be used with Cartoon Animator. Photo uh, vibrance. Photo vibrance. I, mm. I'm not familiar with photo vibrance. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with that either, uh, Raul. That's uh, interesting. I'm, I'm not I'm sure what it does. It Maybe you can kind of... Picture animation. Okay, yeah, I, I just searched it on the... Did you find something? Here. Photo vibrance. Is this what you're talking about? Picture animation unleashed. Yeah, apparently you take... Ah, I see what, what, what happens. Yeah, it does stuff like this. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I would this, this is what this is what my Google Photos like does sometimes. It'll take like a picture and it'll be like, we created a cool animated photo for you, and it'll like have you know the foreground animated separately from the background to just kind of layer it. Man, honestly, it's it's just ama amazing to me. Like I don't know if uh, you know any of you are as old as I am. I'm I'm, I'm forty now, so uh, I remember Dude, back I, in the I day, it would take it would take you ages to age. do this kind of thing. Yeah. You're 40? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm 42, man, wow. I mean, I mean oh, I'm mean, i 40 also. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. It just, it just blows my mind, that, you know, back in, like, learning Photoshop back in high school, like, how many steps you would have to go through to create even, like, something even close to this. It would just take ages, you know, and, like, now it's all, boom, done with AI, Click, you know. A couple of clicks. Yeah, man. 
yeah. humans were going to become obsolete soon. <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. Uh, okay, Dave, David. Oh, hey, David, how's it going? David Gleason's here. Uh, Adobe Illustrator uses AI, but mostly for colors. Yeah, very good observation. Um, we have a Chinese name here. Uh, 2D uh, and 3D I interchangeable. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to an extent, you can you can take 3D images and bring them into 2D. You can take 2D images and bring them into 3D. Um, the scenario that you're going to use them are all very, uh, very unique to each other. So, I mean, obviously, if you take a 2D image into a 3D software, you're going to require, uh, it's only going to be like a 2D image plane, basically. Um, you can generate a 3D model from a 2D image uh, in Blender. I think we have a, did we have a webinar on that? No, I did a, I did a tutorial on that a long time ago. And it was taking a, a 2D um, background oh, to like a city cool. background set and like using uh, Blender to kind of just fill in Project. Um, the, uh, make, make it into three-dimensional. But uh, yeah, so there's certain things you, you can do uh, back and forth, but certain things you can't. All right. Ronald Slaughter. Yes. Right. Probably he said yes, so, but you said Ronald Slaughter said he's seventy years old. So we're like we're like young to we're young <laughs> bucks to you, Ronald. <laughs> right. We're just uh, what do you call the little kids, um, the Jedi um, Padawans. apprentices, Padawans? Yeah. yeah, we're just Padawans compared to Ronald. Um, all right. So one more question from Gerald here: uh, What training resource should be watched first and second and last? to learn Cartoon Animator? A uh, very good question, Gerald. I think this is a question a lot of people that are new starting out with Cartoon Animator are curious about. My advice would be just to go to our Reelers and Courses page first. Um, I think I still have it up. I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly here with y'all. Um, yeah, this is, my recommendation is for, for the place to get your best um, start with cartoon animators go to religion courses so it's just courses.religion.com at the top here you can see um you need to choose your tool so in this case we're using cartoon animator and then go to getting started is it all is a really good way to get familiar with all the basic tools and ui and stuff so there's a someone getting arrested in the background it sounds like <laughs> um they can hear the sirens <laughs> But these these are all like the uh, beginner beginner tutorials here and getting started. I recommend these ones. Uh, you know, basically character composers, a very important tool you need to know if you want to create your own characters, uh, character types, all these different ones here. Uh, th this is where I would get started. Obviously, that's why it's titled Getting Started. And then, you know, kind of whatever. I find that, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do we learn the software? How do we learn this software, that software? I can honestly tell you in my past experience, like I've done courses on like, uh, you know, software like Unreal or Blender or something like that. I've taken courses on them, but you kind of forget a lot of the stuff you learn if you don't use it for like a couple of weeks. You know, like yeah. you take a course on this and like you don't use it for a month. You're like, oh, how do I do that again? You have to go back to the video, which is kind of annoying. Um, so the way I kind of uh, advise people to approach learning a new software is First of all, have the idea about what you want to create. I so love create. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So honestly, and then you just create it and you, you'll obviously hit speed bumps and you'll be like, okay, how do, how do I, you know, how do I multiply this 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 building like a hundred times to get a background and then to so you YouTube it, you like search it. And then you, you just find the the, the tools and, and the tips along the way. And I just honestly just go to YouTube. I, there's really nothing that is free. Um, Everything that I've, I've learned that's kind of stuck in my head uh, because I was required to do it as part of my project, um, it's always been from generally from YouTube, sometimes forum stuff. It, get, it gets a bit more complicated. But uh, yeah, honestly, my advice in, in general is just like um, have, your, have, your, have your vision ahead of uh, create a vision of what you want to do and just get started. Just take the first step. Don't don't worry if you're not prepared or anything. Just start doing it, and then you'll you'll come across obviously things you don't know, and it's all part of the learning process. But you're basically, when you do that, you're creating your own course. You know, 
like you're creating your own course based on your final project. So that's kind of uh, the way that I, I found was the most efficient to learn because I, I found myself like taking this course and that course and re watching this tutorial, that tutorial, and I would just watch it. And yeah, I'd follow along, but I would just kind of forget easily, um, you know, what I was doing. But when you're really focused on something that you want to create, that you want to do, that you need to do, I, I find it sticks in your head um, a lot easier. I don't know. Is that the same for you, Mark? Or? Yeah, it's, yeah, like uh, Gerald also typed. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, I want to just uh, piggyback on that. It's because that's what I tell my students. Like whenever they ask me, how do I do this? Okay, what's your goal? What do you want? So Gerald, I would ask, what what is it that you want to be animated? Like, do you have a clear idea? Do you have a reference? Like, like this, a video like this. And then you see that the character walks, the character talks, and then it leaves the scene. How do I do? Now, I don't have to learn a lot, all the features that uh, the software has to give me. Maybe it's four features. When I learned those four features and I do the exact animation that got me excited in the first place. So you mm -hmm. save so much time. I, that was uh, something that I uh, told in, in my email list. To my email list, I sent an email how I learned software in one week, any software, like super fast in a couple of hours during the week, right? Like I sit half an hour. At first I define what I want and then I just focus on learning searching for those specific features on YouTube. I would go to YouTube and then uh, how I make my character speak in Cartoon Animator. Boom, you get one tutorial from Kai. Kai has tutorials in, in here, right? So yeah, that's basically it. I, just kind of being more specific, but that's that would be the thing. What's yeah, that? absolutely. I mean, if um, for those of you who, you know, plan your projects ahead using storyboarding or script writing or whatever, um, Get it, get it all taken care of first. Do your, do your creative imagining first, and then the skills will follow. Okay, question from uh, Machiage. Ma Ma Sorry if I just totally butchered the name. So, uh, sounds what like features... Czech or Polish. Machiage. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, what new features will be in New Rigging Mastery course, Mark, compared to the previous one? Uh, That's your course coming up. Yes. Thank you for your interest. This one is focused on three speed rigging techniques and we go in depth into those. It's about working as fast as possible. And also this one includes a deep dive into character design for Cartoon Animator 5. When I'm designing, like how to design a character that is going to have two things. One is going to look really cool and two is going to be rigged really easy. So basically is the process, I can tell you the process right now and you can search it on, on YouTube. A lot of students, like I have told many students this solution already and, and they struggle. So that's why I created this course. But this is the solution is just take the character, like, oh, I, I'm going to design a car in, in this case. I can show you really quick since, let, let me just share my screen. We created, uh, yeah, here, let me get this. So what I did was basically design an original character in the style of anime. And I did this process, right? I got, this is the, the character that I created. It's like in the style of anime. I did research I, in the course. I explained how to do that research, how to study uh, a rig, how to see if it's compatible with what you want to do. And then if I take that and compare it with red, I'm going to, get the character red, this is the, the character that I used. And it's very, very simple. I need them to have the same pose. Let me just make, look, is this character is based on red. So all I did was I created the, the like all the elements are there. Like it has the, the eyes are kind of similar. The mouth, the mouth is actually exactly the same, so I don't have to draw all the mouths. And then the hair also has three elements for the head. And when I take this, I can have the character, like it's totally rigged. And I only needed to do some adjustments because I took this one and then I, I just look, the, the rig is the same. 
But all I did was take this one, open it as a PSD, and then put all the elements like this eye, change it for that one. And so when I save it, now suddenly I have a character that is already rigged for me, right? So you can try it if you struggle. Like, like that's in a nutshell what the course is about. Awesome. Uh, hopefully that answers the question there. Um, Raul asks about a previous version of Rigging Mastery. Can I get a discount? Are we actually planning on running a promotion, Raul? If you subscribe to our email list, you would get a promotion. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, guess what, Mark? I think we're out of questions. I think that's ah. that's all she wrote. That's awesome. All right. You can actually go home early. <laughs> well, I'm already at home, but, or home, but you know, I can, uh, we can quit early and uh, go have some dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, I, I guess that's that's it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us today. It's, it's a real pleasure to have you with us. And thank you again, Mark, for, as always, creating an awesome uh, webinar for us and, um, you know, just showing people the, 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 the cool features that they can go through and uh, learn and in, in a creative way. Um, Mark is always a really, really kind of uh, uh, a comprehensive teacher in, in showing kind of like a more practical method of doing things just not not telling but actually showing and, and uh getting you guys to interact as well so that's great always good to have mark with us uh thank you everyone especially those of you those of you who woke up super early in australia there i guess um i know it's uh early for you eastern and western australia yeah um awesome man yeah don't forget to uh, fill out the survey um to get the discount for the content store um give us suggestions for more webinars you guys want in the future and uh, yeah, lovely to have you all here. Um, thanks to our team, uh, Revision team that's uh, curating this webinar. Uh, uh, thanks again to Mark. And uh, yeah, we'll see. You. Adios. Bye -bye. Bye, bye. bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> bye bye. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs>